All right, well, um, good morning all. And um, thanks for coming to our uh, next uh, series in our podcast. I must say that um, it's taken a while for us to come together, hasn't it? It has. Yeah. A few false starts with COVID isolation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So COVID still creating a lot of disruptions for us, um, you know, especially with our day-to-day stuff. But it's good to have you guys. And um, I'll, uh, I'll introduce yourself. <laughs> so we've got Michael Lynch, who uh, is representing the Synergist Fund. Yeah. And we have Anna Ashton, who's with Social Ventures Australia. Uh, welcome. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Yeah. So, um, Michael, if I can start with you, um, tell us more about what Synergist is and, and what's the Synergist Fund and how did that come about? Yeah, thanks, Sam. So Synergis um, is an investment fund that's focused entirely on investing in um, disability accommodation. Um, It was created with a vision that all Australians would ultimately have access to safe, affordable, Mm. appropriate accommodation for their care needs and also Mm. setting a standard of the quality of of accommodation for people with a a disability. And, And that... We deliberately didn't frame it as being SDA only because we would like to ultimately get to a position where we can solve the housing needs of people that are not eligible for SDA mm. as well. But, um, you know, there's a number of challenges there and, and obviously we need to get the SDA part right first and there's still yeah. plenty of work to do there. But the fund was born out of um, SVA um, and, and I was, uh, I, I, was uh, I worked for SVA for a number of years and, and ran the impact investing team there and um, we got involved in disability accommodation um, for a long period of time we've invested um, in different models um, pre-NDIS um, and, and once with the advent of SDA we looked at it as space as an opportunity to, um, it was designed to bring capital of scale into um, solving a social issue which is disability mm-hmm. accommodation. So when we, we the, 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 it was quite a, it, in its conception and as a policy tool um, is, is great. I think it's, a, it's well conceived and structured. There's lots of bits and pieces that are still moving to yeah. perfect it. Yeah. But it was as, a, as, a, as a, a policy tool, I think it was a, a great so initiative. Yeah. And where, where we, so we were sitting there, the, the problem was nothing was happening, even though this had been created and there, there were a number of, different issues that were behind that um, and particularly with the, the you know the scale of investment we think in the space will be somewhere between five to fifteen billion mm-hmm. um, so mm-hmm. it, that doesn't come oh, that doesn't come from mum and dad investors it's going mm-hmm. to have to we have to attract large um, institutional capital super mm-hmm. funds and the like to invest in the space mm-hmm. So when that wasn't happening, um, and there was a number of reasons for that, um, it was a new investment class. People had to understand it. So at, at SVA, we spent a lot of time. One of the, I guess, the unique situations that SVA was in was an um, intermediary in the social sector and an impact investor. Was that we, we we sort of when you think about the worlds that came together in SDA, you had. Um, the social sector and the traditional service providers to the disability mm. sector, and then you had large investors over here. Um, they don't; they're living in completely different worlds. And, yes, and what absolutely. we found was that SVA was a bit of a bridge between those worlds mm. um, because mm. we could we could walk in both worlds, and 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 I think that gave um, credibility to both sides mm. um, in in terms of that. Um, you know, service providers and, and particularly businesses um, like ourselves at Good Housing, which were startup businesses, could, could work with um, a team that, that, that had that credibility and, and, you know, also from a policy perspective with government mm. as well. So that, that we, we found that there was a role for SVA to, to, to play there, um, which ultimately led to what is now the, the Synergist Fund. And we, we did partner with a, another fund management firm called Federation Asset Management, um, mm. an ESG investor that... Um, you know, we found for us was had the same visions and values of what we wanted to achieve with 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 the fund. Mm. So, um, and that, that's great. That's fantastic. But can you explain to me? So, um, social housing has um, historically always been a government initiative or um, something that's always been driven by either state or well, state in this country or some federal in other countries. Um, how does the how does the the private sector, um, which I'm assuming the funding is is, is more private orientated, how how has that made an impact on that providing social? Because I mean, the, the SDA, well, specialist disability accommodation, is really a social accommodation, right? 
Um, how's the private sector made a difference to that to that market? Yeah, it's good. It's it's a good point, and, and it is. That's when you know my point about being a well designed policy tool mm. was really that. So the the, you know, the the alternatives the government had would they could just invest and build housing themselves, or mm. they could use a tool like SDA to attract third party capital right. to develop and and have the private sector. Yeah. I think my, you know, my my theory would be. Um, you know, with the right incentives in place and the right structure of the industry, that ultimately the private sector will drive a better result for people with a disability than if the government and was doing it themselves and, and, and greater scale. Yeah. And do you think they could be more innovative? Arguably. Yeah, it's, it's, um, I know we were talking about this yeah. before and, and, you know, innovation, um, people have different views as to what innovation is in, in the space and the housing and I think what we... The, the model that we work with um, as an investor is very um, much partnering with the right, right people. So we, we don't, um, we're just purely a landlord investor. Mm. We, don't, um, we don't provide services in the houses. We're not an SDA provider. And we, to us, the most important thing that we're doing is creating great, out, great outcomes. And, and Anna will talk a little bit about the framework that she's building to allow us to, to measure those outcomes for people. But the main thing for, for us was to work with the right partners that shared that 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 people centric yeah. approach. So it's not about we don't build it and they'll come. We're not yeah. just buying apartments in a development and trying to find people to fill them. We work with people such as Good Housing, which have yeah. been a Fantastic partner for us. Um, so, oh, over, over, Is that over. because you're on the podcast? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I say that about everyone we work with, Sam, because they're all great people. Um, so we, but it, but it, in, in all seriousness, you know, we we were very selective about the people that we wanted to invest with and work with, um, the people that had that focus on outcomes. Um, and, and I know I said this to you before, but I, my my view is that if you focus on solving for people and making sure that you you meet their needs, you're providing accommodation that's well located, mm. well constructed, it's a real home for people, then the financial returns kind of just drop out the bottom of that because that's what the system's set up to do. Mm. Um, and I think that's why working with the right partners has been really important to us, and particularly when you, you know, now we've attracted some scale institutional investment into the fund. Um, that reputational risk is very important mm, yeah. for um, institutional investors, they don't want to be associated with, um, you know, bad, uh, outcomes. In bad outcomes for people and, and, you know, being on the front page of the paper yeah. and yeah. so forth. So the selection of the people that we work with is absolutely critical mm. to our strategy. And, uh, and, and we've certainly we've certainly appreciated working alongside the expertise of, of the Synergist Fund together with what you've drawn from SVA and together what we've done with Federation. But what's really key for us and what we're learning as we're growing and developing in, in, in this world of a new space of capital is that there is capital that is available now to solve problems in our communities, um, social issues that we are faced with and challenged with. Uh, there are ways of which capital can do well by doing good. And, and I think that's it's fantastic to see a policy in Australia that I think internationally um, is setting a benchmark as to how that could be done. Orient, reorientating the incentives through a policy to make sure that private capital is going into solving a, a, a problem and then providing um, some subsidies or whatever is necessary from government, which reduces their requirement in being able to build them all themselves. And I think that, and, and I've always viewed SDA as a potential example about how you yeah. could apply a similar structure to address the issues of, of other cohorts. And one of the areas that um, was a, an interest of mine um, before we sort of went off the synergist path mm. was um, addressing the issue of homelessness amongst right. older women. Um, mm -hmm. So that's another cohort that mm -hmm. we think that there's, you know, potentially a structure that could be, look something like SDA to, to do an issue. But, you know, for, 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 for us, one of the key things um, and going to that people centric and outcomes focus, one of the things we had at the start was going, that's great that we can generate financial returns for our investors. And that's pretty easy mm -hmm. to measure. Um, but are we delivering the right social outcomes of what we're set up to great. do? So from the yeah. outset for us, it was like, how are we going to measure that? So yeah. talking to my um, my colleagues yeah. at SVA yeah. at the time, um, we started off on that process. But I'll, you know, Anna, nice you can, segue. Yeah. You can <laughs> segue into Anna t telling us about a bit more about the framework. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. 
Sure. Um, and I might start by going back a step in who is SVA. So yeah, we're yeah, a not-for-profit organisation. We work towards an Australia where all people and communities thrive. We yeah. do that in a range yeah. of different ways. Yeah. We have an impact investing team, which Michael sort of spoken to. We have some programs. We have policy and advocacy team. And then we have the consulting team, which is yeah. uh, where I sit. And what yeah. we do within our team is actually partner with organisations um, yeah. around questions of strategy, outcomes measurement, evaluation and the like. Yeah. Uh, and the conversation that Michael and I started, mm. gosh, nearly three years ago now, years I think. Ago, yeah. yeah, it's been yeah. a while. Yeah. Um, was really aligned with the conversations that we're having with others across the sector, obviously the two of you, and with other providers as the SDA market was, was starting to emerge and evolve. Yeah. And we were hearing really three consistent challenges as that market was evolving. You know, the first challenge was, well, how do you get the right capital into the market mm -hmm. uh, to really enable these developments? And obviously we've spoken a little bit about, that, you know, how that capital uh, growth was developing. The second one was around, well, data. Where do people mm -hmm. want to live? Mm -hmm. In what configuration? And what does that look like, not just for people, you know, now where they're living currently, but as they evolve over their housing careers and also as new people are coming in and getting enrolled in the scheme, you know, what does yeah. that look like? And there's, you know, increasing data coming yeah. out around that from the agency and others, which is really exciting. But that third question was, well, even if we have the capital coming in mm -hmm. and even if we know where people want to live, what does good look like when it comes to disability it's housing? Like that. Yeah. yeah, excuse the pun. <laughs> but what does it look like? And, and how do we know what works for different people with different aspirations, needs mm. in different communities across Australia? And that was really the problem that we came together as a coalition to try and solve. Absolutely. Nice. Well, when you mentioned it and it came up in the first instance, we, we were on it because we thought that was fantastic. But the fact that starting from the bottom up, and, and the ground up from what we're doing in terms of coming up with a framework that never existed before and measuring impact in disability homes it, it was incredible. And for us, we saw mm. the value in it in an instant because we would always be trying to work out we could with, with, with an approach that might allow us in a home to say, oh yeah, that's generated impact. We can see that that's definitely improved their quality of life. But now we're trying to put that into words. Uh, there's been a huge body of work that we've that you've led and charged and led the charge and in what you've been doing with the, the outcomes framework as to where it's gotten to now. So tell us a, a little bit more about that framework, the, some of the levers that we've talked about yeah. as well, um, some of the good feedback, feedback we're already getting from some of the pilots. Um, yeah. I think it's been really positive and encouraging. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's been a fantastic journey that we've all been along. There's a whole coalition. I certainly can't take the credit yeah. <laughs> as a huge amount of people uh, who've been really leading this work to date. And what we wanted to do was really start from from the person. You know, a person living in the home. What does it mean for them to have a really good life? And yeah. so we spent a lot of time. I think it was you know a solid twelve months of speaking with people, speaking with their families and their supporters, speaking with different organisations to understand uh, what are the common outcomes that can be achieved for people by living in really good accommodation. Yeah. And one of the things that we learned critically was while the built form and the SDA is, is really essential, it's not the only thing. We also need to consider what are those in-home supports that people are accessing because mm. it was that combination of that built form and those in-home supports right. that enabled really good outcomes for people. So that was our starting point. Yeah, and we've got on that steering committee a combination of some of the some of the better SIL providers or great SIL providers um, together with some of the good SDA providers as well. So I think that working together in combination has been a, a great collaboration in producing what we've got in the outcomes framework so far. Yeah. yeah and the pilots have looked good. Yeah. And, and some of the scores that have come back. I know Sonia in our team who was on the podcast before as a tenant empowerment manager, she, she loves it and she's feeling really fulfilled by knowing that there's a measure now that she can apply in working together with tenants and in our home to say, well, with a level of certainty or a, le a level of objectivity, um, this has produced a, a great outcome. Yeah, that's right. So we're really excited. We just completed our first six-month pilot yeah. of seeing what does it work like in practice? Yeah. How does it work in the day-to-day -day context of people's lives, mm -hmm. in the context of service provision within the mm -hmm. homes? And, yeah, we've had really positive feedback. So uh, mm -hmm. from people themselves who've been, you know, providing data into mm -hmm. it around their experience in the home, they've been really excited yeah. by the opportunity to have their voice heard mm. and to give feedback on what are they like and what are they not like to mm. make changes. And from providers themselves, you know, you've mentioned Sonia, we've had really great feedback from all of the different providers who've been participating to mm. say, oh, this is giving us a way to understand what's working for people. Yeah. And if we need to make changes, we're getting that information early 
so we can make those changes quickly okay. before it becomes a, a big issue, which is really exciting. It is a, is a fun question is, from what we've seen so far on the pilots, are there adjustments that we would need to make to what we're producing in homes more on, on average from what you're seeing as a common theme across the board that may reduce the financial returns um, that we're achieving? So could we achieve greater impact, but that would be at the cost of, of a financial return? Um, from what we've seen so far, is, is that what we would have to do or are there opportunities in the country that we can actually achieve both? There's certain things that we can do to add value to improve outcomes, but at the same time, it will also improve the sustainability of the asset. Yeah, I think I think the short answer is it's a little bit too early to tell. Okay. It's only been six months yeah. uh, of piloting, but I think the longer answer is I expect it will be the latter. Yeah. Uh, you know, we know that there's you know vacancy risk in homes and things like that. That's a really key. Uh, challenge with those yeah. financial returns, which we know, but that's also a key challenge for mm. for people's good outcomes. And mm. if we can create homes that are well designed, that are accessible, mm. that work for that person or the yeah. people living in that home, then they're going to want to stay. Yeah. And then that creates that, that sort of financial incentive as well. So mm. in, in my view, I think there's the opportunity to do both. Michael can probably speak to that. Um, mm. But that's certainly something that we, we you know, we'll see as it evolves, um, but I don't think it's going to be a it necessarily a trade-off. It, it increases the appeal, the attractiveness of the new homes that we're building. Yeah, it, it's associated with I, 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 the, my answer to the question is: I hope you wouldn't have to do that to yeah. to, to, to create those outcomes. And yeah. um, you know, if you if you if you put a sort of financial lens on it, we're we're trying to solve a fairly large social issue uh, mm -hmm. and build um, a sustainable market that offers people living with a disability, true choice and control as to where they can live. Now, to do that, as I said, we're, we're talking at least five billion, potentially up to 15 billion of investment that will have to be made by the private sector in the space. So you've got people that are, um, you know, living in, in aged care at the moment, you've got people living at home, um, you've got people in inappropriate rental accommodation, you've got people in legacy <coughs> group homes. We need to build homes for those people. So, that the balance that we um, have as a fund is we want to generate great outcomes. Having a tool to measure that is critical to that, mm. but we have to deliver a level of financial returns to attract that 10 or $15 billion right. of yeah, capital. Absolutely. So that's what we, that's what we battle with every, every day yeah. um, is mm. trying to, to make projects feasible mm. to keep the, the capital coming into the sector. And, and we set out, we don't, we don't want to own the market. Mm. Part of our mission when we set out, um, particularly back in the, the days of the conception of what, what the fund is now, is like the question wasn't so much how do we build a fund and you know dominate the market. The, the question was how do we how do we help foster the development of a, of a, of a market and an industry and bring that capital that will actually inspire confidence. Yeah, it, it, how do we how do we help um, seed and develop a, mm -hmm. a, a market that will be long term sustainable that will ultimately genuinely offer people mm -hmm. choice and control over where they live, um, yeah. and that that was one of you know that was a very important part of our mission. So so one of one of the things that I, I so you mentioned um, ESG earlier, um, and it'd be good if you could explain that to our listeners, but um, possibly with my question you might be able to use that as a part of your answer. So we've got um, we've got people who are people with disability who are living in unsuitable accommodation and then we've got capital who are looking for financial returns why um and and those financial returns might be less than what they would might get on on the market if they're investing in an oil company or whatever the case may be so what why is why is the, the yeah exactly why is why is this fund um why are they so interested in social? Uh, why are they so interested in people? These people having positive outcomes and, and way, having a measure. Goldman Sachs, big institutional um, investment bank. Uh, why peak they, their interest? Sure, they can get more returns from Berkshire Hathaway. Yeah, it's, 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 so I think there's there's clearly a, a global movement towards ESG, and ESG stands for environmental, social, and governance. So, mm -hmm. so it's basically companies that do something other than make money. Right. Um, so they have some sort of a, 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 an input, whether it's you know environmental, it's um, green energy, or, or, or something of the, the like. Or in social, obviously, this fits nicely into what would be um, you know social impact investing. Yeah. Um, and then governance is clearly making sure you have a framework so they're you know it's it's dealing with ethical firms that are well governed and, um, and diverse. So 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 that 
there's a there's there's an increasing requirement for that amongst institutional investors, and a lot of that has been. I mean, when when we think about institutional investors and particularly super funds, sitting behind those super funds is people like us. Right. Um, so you know, normal everyday people yeah, that invest their superannuation and they entrust that superannuation fund to invest on their behalf. Mm. What we see is is certain um, institutional investors differentiating them differentiating themselves mm. to attract people to invest with them because of their focus on ESG. Got it. Mm. So it's it's almost like a it's 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 a consumer driven trend in a lot of ways and that's mm. what that's what people are saying they want. I don't just want to, you know, it, and it's not like a negative, you know, the old negative screens which are like a, you know, we won't invest in tobacco or arms mm. manufacturers or anything. It's like it's got to be more than that. It's got to be we you you need to give us a financial return, but we want to see our money being directed to generate something positive, whether it's in for the oh, environment good. or social, so so that as a you know you combine that with um, you know a, 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 a you know SDA as a as an initiative um, by government and, and um, to it gives you an option to, uh, and an ability to invest. Now, one of the other issues that um, investors have is that. They need to invest at scale because many of these, you know, they're, they're managing many hundreds of billions of dollars, mm -hmm. and they don't want to be doing single SDA projects. Mm -hmm. um, so they entrust a manager like us to, to do that to invest mm -hmm. on their behalf. Um, but they're all they they need that scale. They want to in they don't want to invest twenty million dollars. They want to invest two hundred, three hundred million dollars. Which is great, dollars. right? Because it becomes scalable in fact. Exactly. So yeah. one of one of the challenges that we had is we had to convince them that this is a scalable market. Yeah. Mm. So of all the things, you know, the the the, the list mm. of things that we went down to educate people say we we actually believe that this is a scalable market. And and the strategy that we took to do that and um, we had to do we had to do sort of two things. It was a bit chicken and egg because. We had to, to, to raise money, we had to demonstrate that we had a pipeline of opportunities. Mm. Um, so, you know, I think the first investment we made was with you guys yeah. um, way, way back a couple of years ago. That's right. Um, and we had to work, we had to back people um, to say that we, you, you know, the, the, the why we started working with, with you guys was really, I mean, we, you understood the space and you had a defined strategy of what you thought you could do and 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 that's been largely executed today um so you know well done in Thanks. terms of where you've yeah. where you where you've got to yeah. um but you know and we're, we're very happy to see that um but it, it, it you know that proving that pipeline of opportunities mm. that you know an organization can you know hopefully deliver 20 houses a year or, or mm. something like so we, we we aim to invest 200 million dollars a year um, across our partners so we, wow. we have eight partners that we work with generally geographically diverse so mm. in some in Queensland and mm. um, far north Queensland we've got a great provider we work with up there mm. we, we're starting to do some work in South Australia now mm. um, Victoria we, we, we work with some great organizations um, so we're really including us Yep, including including you guys. Now that um, we, we're about to do our first project yeah, with you in, yeah. in Victoria, yeah. which is which is awesome. Um, and you know, we we one thing that um, and without sort of making it a you know a good housing advertisement is <laughs> the one thing that we are is the quality of, of the product that you guys are, are producing. Um, I would go out on a limb and say it's almost best in class in, oh, in SDA. Oh, fantastic! Um, Thank from you. What I've seen. I appreciate um, that. And I always say, it, as you Sam, with what you're doing and building the way that you thanks. build it to the standard that you're building it to, um, a lot of work does go into the early part on how we're working on the design together in collaboration, mm. together mm. with the, the capital partners and, and the civil partners and the tenants. But then the proofs in the pudding every single time um, we come and deliver those projects and the quality of what we're able to get it to within the scope that we've got to work with within the price. The, the the challenges now with supply chain mm. issues and costs it's actually it's a that's a an accomplishment unto itself yeah. it, um, it, it's a it's still a very challenging environment yeah. um, um, mm. particularly in the current property market where to, to, to find well located suitable mm. land um, yeah. at a at a cost that is mm. financially feasible mm. is a, is a challenge um, obviously you know building materials mm. access to labour um, you know we we're seeing that across Australia where those challenges are. Are really hopefully you know, we can get the um, NDIS to come to the table on the next SDA price on the price yeah I, I think that's you know that's obvious um, and you know as, as background um, 
SCA is a regulated market. Yeah. Um, it's based on a, 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 a model that creates a matrix of um, how, what SDA is paid for different types of housing mm. for different types of people. Mm. Um, it's going, it, it, it's going the, it, next year um, will be announced its first full price review. Mm. So that process is starting mm. now. Um, but clearly, um, there's a lot of inputs there to go in there, like mm. uh, the cost of land, the cost of building materials. Mm. There's also um, a number of things that are not properly accounted for in the model today. And, and mm. in fairness, that you know, it started seven years ago, yeah. where you know people didn't know what they didn't know to an extent. Um, mm. So it, 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 you know, we now um, and through our work as um, the, the SDA Alliance and mm. my. my um, hat that I wear in the mm. SDA Alliance is I, I'm the chair of the SDA yeah. Alliance. Oh, of which, congratulations, um, that's yeah, well done. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's good. But it's, it's, it's hard, but it's, it's, it's great to be. Um, it's great to be in, involved. It's a terrific team of people. We get, um, we get, it's supported we're by the biggest nags. We understand. Yeah, and you know, look, you know, you, you guys are very active members of, of that alliance group as yeah. well. Um, and the alliance is, plays a really important part in mm. um, you know a, accessing. The agency being able to feed into policy Definitely. decisions and, and and things like that, and Mel South or the CEO does a fantastic job mm, um, at, 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 at doing that. Um, but that that you know that's going to be a big focus of the alliance mm. coming out is is putting a submission into the price review. Mm. Yeah. Um, so that um, and that will you know that will come from all the members um, mm. and it's advised to range of members, um, some in, investors like ourselves and SDA providers and mm. some access consultants and mm. just uh, and and you know the alliance is also a big sponsor of that. The housing outcomes framework and yeah, it's very right. much um you know we, we want to the, the alliance is really for um i, I guess it, it there is a bar to be a member and it's all about you know having people that have a a similar vision for um creating a you know a sustainable industry that does create those great outcomes mm -hmm. for people so the the measurement framework is critical to the yeah, long-term success of that industry so so um yeah the that that, that that's Kind of a very big priority for us because we, we and, and you know from a, a policy government perspective an agency perspective you have to get this right like you, if if I get this wrong um, I'm not necessarily saying be terminal for the industry mm. but it will be a very significant setback. Yeah, it yeah. takes one big setback that will um, scare capital and once it, it, capital I think is big I, enough to scare it, it mm. goes away. It, it, exactly, I think you'll 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 lose that um, you know the. The credibility that's been built to, to date yeah. um, and the confidence, and I think that yeah, would, you know, we, yeah. I, I've used this this term is that um, SDA will still be there, but it, it it it'll only be well, I would sort of a cottage industry, so it's not yeah. going to address the needs yeah. and issues of the tens of thousands of people that need access to Absolutely. appropriate housing. But Absolutely. another, but a big point on this is, and this is again emphasising the critical importance of what we're doing as part of the house the housing outcomes framework is. The scalability and the way that we work together with um, the NDIS and being able to argue certain points or press certain points as it relates to how we work towards scalable impact is how we then have a person-centric approach of which we're delivering and establishing that we are actually creating positive impact, that we have had a positive outcome achieved for tenants working together with the sill providers within the home. Yeah, but, you know. that's right. What we want to make sure is, you know, as we're learning, you know, SDA is new, we're still learning what works and what creates good outcomes. Yeah. And we know that's going to be different for different people. And what we don't want to have is in 15, 20, 30 years is another Royal Commission into inappropriate yeah. housing. We yeah. want to be yeah. making sure that we're setting up right now really good right. understanding of what works so that we can make sure that we're building infrastructure that really mm -hmm. does, you know, create good outcomes for people, you know, these people's lives. Yeah. That goes into it. And the NDI is doing everything in their power to make sure that yeah. they're continuing to provide that fuel that's needed for scale. So we just uh, just with, I just want to take a step back just quickly. So we talked about the, um, the the funds ESG funds that are wanting that are looking for for these type of um, developments, um, and I, I'm assuming that the most important thing for them is trying to measure that impact because they want to invest in areas that are, have got impact. So, um, so speaking blue sky, looking to the future, what does impact or the the framework? Mm. What's that going to achieve ideally in the future? Like. Uh, for, especially for not only these funds, but for everyone else in the industry. What are we celebrating? Yeah. yeah. So what we hope is that 
because we have a common approach mm. and a common way of measuring impact. As we roll this out across the sector and, you know, slight plug, it will be available across the sector um, from the middle of this year uh, as we do work through the changes from the pilot. What we hope is that over time we have a way to look at what's working across the sector to drive improvements that will enable people to make different choices about their homes. If they have a particular focus or a particular area that they really want to achieve in their life, who are the providers out there that are working really well in that space or in that region? For providers, it helps you learn to understand what's working and what's not. Yeah. And for investors and for government, it's helping to understand, well, what is working at scale and across the sector? How are we understanding not only the impact of the investments that we've currently made, yeah. but in fact, the impact of future investments we yeah. might want to make and how and where are we directing our capital uh, to create those really good social outcomes. So we see this as an opportunity for that sector-wide learning, mm -hmm. um, starting with the person, but then going out from there. And, and the future viability of the of the policy, that the government continues to invest more into it, I think mm -hmm. it really will play a critical mm -hmm. role in that occurring. I, I think from a, and, and putting an investor perspective on it, it's absolutely critical for us because mm -hmm. we, we you know, if, if we're working with someone that's not delivering outcomes to people that, um, you know, in line with what will be a high standard across the industry and, you know, across our portfolio, is that we will stop investing with those people, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we're, we're confident we've got the right partners that that's not going to be the case. But we certainly, yeah. you know, we, we will be, to us, it's going to be a continual process of measuring the outcomes mm -hmm. that are being generated. And if they're not up to what we think is an acceptable standard, then that will, they'll, they'll lose their access to capital. Makes sense. Um, and so that, that's, right, yeah, so that's, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's really important. And, and look, investors want to see that reporting as, as well. And I think that, you know, that, that so it, 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 it's helping to define good, mm -hmm. what good is, um, and then measuring people's Ability performance to, against good. Yeah. That's excellent. And, 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 yeah, that is great. Also, I want to ask you, what are you, what are you seeing on the ground? Like, is, it, is this actually working? Like, are people, is there a benefit here? Is it, is, is it happening or is it we're just still talking blue sky here? I, I, I guess so. I like to, the thing that really helps drive me and my involvement in this space <laughs> Is when I get access to some of the personal stories yeah, of that's people, what we love. and yeah. and um, seeing the difference that having access to what is a proper home for them, not you know, mm. and and I've seen some pretty ordinary disability accommodation, mm. terrible, like it's you know, it's it's it, it's just not acceptable for anyone mm. to be living, let alone the most vulnerable people. And it's all, they're also horrible working environments for people that care yeah, for these people. Yes. So th those things are really Im important to me. And, and um, you know, what, what, what we have got is occasionally we, you know, coincidentally or whatever, we get some access to, we, we just see the impact that has in people. And I've had a personal experience at, at one of your houses. And I think we, we shouldn't um, forget that um, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's the impact on the individuals, but also on their families and, and carers. Like, you know, knowing that, um, you know, their daughter or their son um, has mm. got somewhere safe and secure to live, mm. that that can be their, you know, that's their home for life. That's um, right. I, I, life. And, and I think, you know, um, that, that you know, must be an incredible thing for, for families and, and just mm. to, to know that, I, mm. you know, I don't have to worry about that um, mm. anymore. Our ethos mm. is no one will ever have to move out of one of our homes yeah. unless yeah. they choose to yeah, um, that's right. or, or, or their situation changes. But um, we, you know, we, we even set the fund up. It's a perpetual fund so we never have to sell any assets. Mm. That's great. You know, it's, it's um, you know, we, these are 60-year plus life assets that we're building yeah. um, and um, we, you know, we, 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 we want people to move in there and um, live, you know, happy yeah. lives. And yeah, you're good. For all of us, housing is such a critical part of all of our lives. It enables our access to community. It enables health, education, employment work, whatever it is we want to do. And I just think that if we're able to, through this process and through the SDA market, if we're able to provide people with access mm to good housing that enables a good life for them, whatever that means mm. for that person, mm. uh, you know, their own aspirations, then that for me is the really exciting And, and that's thing. what causes the impact unto itself. It's it, like you said, just having good housing again, um, excuse the pun, but it's it's like if you've got those bare necessities, those basic needs, but a home that's been produced 
curated and specialized for their specific needs, that makes such a world of difference for them. And I feel like the biggest impact that we're going to see is this initial transition um, across the board for a lot of the tenants that will be moving out of what might be older group homes, but importantly, a lot of the tenants that are stuck in aged care, nursing homes and hospitals. Mm -hmm. That's where the biggest impact in the first part or first instance will be created. So that'll be great to be able to measure that as that occurs. And, and hopefully with like what Michael's saying, as, as Kylie's story, as we apply that and put that through the outcomes framework, that should be and hopefully revealed. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And, and the, I mean, the interesting thing is, um, you know, when you think about the whole construct of, 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 of the NDIS and the role that housing plays is, mm -hmm. you know, there's very strong evidence that providing suitable housing to people will ultimately reduce their cost of care. Yeah. And, you know, that that's something that, that's, you know, policymakers really have to bear in mind is it, it's, you can't, this is not a year by year budget thing, right? That you, yeah. you, 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 this is actually, you know, it's meant to be an insurance scheme and it's about investing in the best models of care and, and driving innovation of care, yeah. giving people that safe place that's their home and, you know, so the evidence is that that will long term reduce the cost of their care. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and you know that's why it's fundamental to get SDA right. It's a small, it's a, you know, it's a relatively small part of the total NDIS yeah. budget, but it's a very critical part. Um, and I'm, you know, and then I'm not playing down also that there's a whole bunch of people that are not eligible for SDA that we need to solve for as well. Yeah, that's right, absolutely. And and hopefully the innovations that we come up with with the SDA, we can then um, interpolate wow. it and put it and apply those to the others. Yeah. Uh, look, I feel like we can talk for hours. In fact, I think we have been talking <laughs> for hours, right? Um, I really would, I mean, if there's nothing else further, I'd, I'd like to say thank you very much, uh, Michael yeah. Lynch <laughs> and Anna. Very very thank you very much. <laughs> 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 we'll bring coming, he's coming incognito today. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's been what two, three years. <laughs> yeah, unless you want to tell the story how to end up with a signed Tom Brady. Um, yeah. I know. <laughs>